You know, I guess some people are still having issues with 100% disk usage, so today we're going to revisit the subject. Stay tuned. It's been exactly a year since my 100% disk usage video came out, and it's still the top video on my channel. In fact, it's still getting tons of views every day. So obviously, this is a problem that's affecting a lot of people. So today, we're going to revisit the subject, and I'm going to give you the top tips, at least the tips that help the most on this subject. Now, these tips aren't going to help everyone, and if you want to watch the full video, I'll go ahead and tag it here so you can check that one out too. So if this kind of content interests you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Now, let's get to the first tip. So the first tip that I'm gonna cover today is disabling some key services that will help reduce your hard drive usage. These are three services that I disable on almost every older system and it helps a lot with disk usage. So let's get to those right now. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do here is click on your start menu and type in services. And then go ahead and open the services app. And now from here, the first service we're gonna look for is the connected user experience and telemetry. So go ahead and scroll down. And here it is right here. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna change this from automatic to disabled, push the stop button, and then hit apply and okay. Essentially what this service does is pretty much just spy on you. This is Microsoft's telemetry service and honestly, I may be wrong on this, but I don't think it has any redeeming qualities at all other than Windows malware. So this one, I disable this one on every system that I work on regardless of disk issues. However, this will help to reduce resources used because you know, you're taking away at least one of the ways that Microsoft spies on you in Windows 10. So now let's move on to the next service. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and we're looking now for a service called System Main. And here it is. This, this service used to be called Superfetch and Microsoft changed the name of the service. I'm not sure exactly which build they changed it in, but they changed it to System Main. Everyone should have System Main now. You probably won't find Superfetch anymore, but just be known that it used to have another name. So we're gonna double click on this. We're gonna go ahead and change automatic to disabled. Then we're gonna hit stop. We're gonna hit apply and okay. And essentially what Superfetch does, or system main in this case, is it actually preloads applications into memory when the computer boots up. So Windows tries to guess which programs that you're gonna use, and it loads those programs in the background so that when you click on them, it appears as if they're loading faster. Unfortunately, this affects your disk usage, and it actually affects a lot of your system's resources. So if you have a slower computer, or you're suffering from 100% disk usage, disk Disabling this service can help out a lot. So now let's move on to the next one. So the next service that we're gonna do is the search service. So we're gonna scroll down to Windows Search, and here it is. We're gonna go ahead and open it. We're going to change the startup type to disabled. We're gonna push stop then apply and okay. And the Windows search service is probably the biggest culprit when it comes to disk usage issues, especially with services. With these three services that we just went over, the search service typically uses the most hard drive resources and can affect 100% disk usage the most. However, this is also the worst one to disable in some cases because this actually disables the Windows search functionality. So if you wanna search for files and folders or if you want to search in Microsoft Outlook, this can actually affect that and make your search actually not work the way that it's supposed to. Um, also, if you're using the Windows 10 built-in backup, this will actually disable the backup so it doesn't work. So you may have to have this service enabled, and if that's the case, unfortunately, you won't get the benefit from disabling it. So now, let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the power profile in Windows 10. And to do that, it's really easy. What you're gonna do is you wanna right click anywhere on the desktop. And we wanna go down to display settings. And then from display settings, you wanna go ahead and click on power and sleep right here. 
And then from there, you want to scroll down until you see additional power settings. Now this might actually be over here on the right if you have the settings expanded to full screen, but if you don't, then just scroll down. You should find this additional power settings somewhere in this power and sleep section. And then once we open that, you can see right here that right now it's set to balanced. And what we want is we want to change this to high performance. And some computers will have the high performance already and some won't. So if it doesn't, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on create power plan and then you want to choose which power plan you want. We want high performance. And then go ahead and name your plan. I'm going to name mine high performance. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next. And then from this section, you can actually change the way that Windows operates where how it turns the display off and how the, it puts the computer to sleep. You can change these settings to fit your needs. And I'm going to go ahead and leave them default and hit create. And now, as you can see, we have two power plans. We have the balanced and we have the high performance. Now, changing the power plan probably isn't going to have a huge effect on your disk usage, but it may help a little bit. And if anything, it will speed your computer up a little bit, but it will also forsake um, the power savings features. So what'll happen is, is that, you know, if you're using a notebook like this one, you may get a little bit less battery life, but your computer will actually be faster. So it might be a good trade-off. I typically always put my computer in the high performance mode because honestly, the performance is more important to me than battery life. So now let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so the next tip actually may seem a little obvious, but this one right here might actually affect your issues more than you might think, and that's simply running Windows Update. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to manually start Windows Update and how you can go through the process. So let's go to the computer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the Start button. You're gonna click on this little cog right here for Settings. And then from there, you want to scroll down to the last item that says Update and Security. Go ahead and click on that, and then push the Check for Updates button. Now, at this point, Update is going to go ahead and run. It's gonna check for updates first, and then once it finds updates, it's automatically gonna install them. And it may take some time if your computer has updates to install, but once it finishes, it should give you a restart button. Go ahead and restart your computer, and hopefully that'll solve the issues that you're having. So now, let's move on to the next tip. The next tip that we're gonna go over is a tip that's helped me solve a lot of 100% disk usage issues. And this is actually a bug in the SATA drivers on some computers. Now this doesn't affect all computers, it only affects some, but if you have this problem, it can result in the 100% disk issue. So let me show you how to fix the problem. Okay, so you wanna right click on your start button and go to device manager. From Device Manager, you want to click on your IDE controllers and pick your SATA controller. From there, click on Driver and click on the Driver Details. If you're using the store AHCI system, then you're probably suffering from this bug. If you're not, then this really doesn't relate to your system. This only relates to systems that are using that specific driver. So if you are using this driver, then we're going to want to move on to the next step. Go ahead and hit OK and you wanna to go to details, and then from the details tab, you wanna to go to device instant path, and then you wanna actually copy this string right here. And the next thing we're gonna do is open up Notepad. From Notepad, I want you to paste that string into Notepad just so we can remember it for later. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is open up regedit, and to do that, just go ahead and type regedit from the start button, and go ahead and launch the registry editor. You're gonna to have to actually allow it to open because you need administrator privileges in order to open it. So we're going to want to go to local machine, system, then current control set, then enum, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably not, but go ahead and click on it anyway, and then we want to go to PCI. And then from this section right here, we want to match our device instant path with the entries here in the registry. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down and see if we can find this instant path in the registry here. And this is the reason why you use Notepad. It makes it a lot easier to figure this out. And it looks like we have it here. So we're going to go ahead and open up the containing folder. And then we're going to move down and we want to look for 
device parameters. So go ahead and click on device parameters. And then from there, we want to go to interrupt management. And then from here, we want to click on message signaling interrupt properties. And from here, you'll see a D word that says MSI supported. So we're going to go ahead and open this one up. It should say one. We want to change this to zero. And this will actually disable the MSI support for that driver. And from this point, we can go ahead and restart Windows. And if this was an issue for you, then you should see a dramatic drop in hard drive usage once you reboot your computer. So now let's move on to the next step. And this step is actually the most important step. This one is going to help your hard drive usage regardless of what your problem is. This one right here is if nothing else works, this is the step that I take on all systems and I haven't had a single system that didn't get its 100% disk issue solved by using this step. And that's unfortunately upgrading to an SSD. You see, Windows takes advantage of the performance benefits of an SSD drive. The reason it does this is because honestly, SSDs used to be quite expensive. I mean, I'm talking like four or 500 bucks for a 120 gig drive. And back then, only pretty much the elite users would use SSDs. Most people use spinning disks because honestly, it was just more affordable. It just was too expensive to use an SSD on a system back when the prices were that high. However, in the last few years, the prices have literally crashed on SSD drives. You can actually buy an SSD drive at the same size as a spinning disk for a comparable price. And honestly, it's not worth not using one nowadays. And because of that, Everyone has been upgrading to SSDs, and because of this, Microsoft has actually started taking advantage of the performance of SSDs, and this is one of the reasons why you're having 100% disk usage issues, is because Windows is expecting your hard drive to be faster, because honestly, you really should be using an SSD. And this is another reason why manufacturers need to stop selling computers with spinning disks. I mean, I, I work on computers all the time that are brand new in the box, and they still have old-fashioned and hard drives in them. You know, honestly, I think that's just an irresponsible way to build a computer nowadays. If you're building a new system, use an SSD. And if you're buying a system, make sure you don't purchase a computer that doesn't have an SSD included. You should be able to get a 500 to one terabyte SSD for honestly really close to the same price as you would for a spinning disk. So there's no reason to use an old fashioned spinning disk anymore. So. I did a video recently where I show how to upgrade your computer from a spinning disk to an SSD without losing any of your data. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin that video right here. So if none of these tips work, then go ahead and watch that video and upgrade yourself to an SSD. So if this video is helpful to you, then please click the like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.